In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the impedance in the circuit shown below, as well as the current flowing in each element. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the inductive reactance, which is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the signal times the inductance. So the frequency of our voltage source is 60 hertz as we could see here, and the inductance is 80 millihenries, or 80 times 10 to the minus 3 henries. And so that's going to be 2 pi times 60 times 80 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to write the answer here. So the inductive reactance in this circuit is 30.16 ohms. So now let's calculate the capacitive reactance. It's 1 over 2 pi Fc. F is still 60 hertz. The capacitance is 30 microfarads. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. So it's 1 over 2 pi times 60 times 30 times 10 to the minus 6. And you should get this answer. So XC is 88.42 ohms. Now, if you're not getting that answer, make sure you put everything in the bottom of the fraction in parentheses. And you should get the right answer as you plug it into your calculator. Now, once you have the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance, you now have enough information to calculate the impedance in the circuit. So the formula to calculate the impedance in a parallel RLC circuit is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 1 over r squared plus 1 over xl minus 1 over xc and then squared. And that's all inside of the square root symbol. So let's go ahead and plug that into this formula. So R is 60 ohms, so that's going to be 1 over 60 squared, plus XL is 30.16, so we have 1 over, let me do that again, so 1 over 30.16, and then minus 1 over the capacitive reactance, which is 88.42. And then once you close the parentheses, make sure you square it. So go ahead and type that into your calculator. You want to be careful the way you type it in. Hold on one second. I'm almost done. So this is the answer that I got for the impedance of the circuit. The impedance is 36.392 ohms. So you can check that as well. Now let's move on to the next part. The next thing that we need to do is calculate the current flowing in each element. So let's calculate the current flowing into the circuit, IS. So that's going to be the source voltage divided by the impedance. So the voltage of the source is 12 volts. The impedance of the circuit, we have it right here, that's 36.392 ohms. So dividing those two, that's going to be, let's see, 0.3297 amps. So let's write that here, 0.3297. Now the next current that we need to calculate is the current flowing through the resistor. So that's IR. That's going to be equal to the source voltage divided by the resistance. That's based on Ohm's law. So the voltage is 12. The resistance is 60 ohms. Dividing those two, that's going to be 
we're going to get a current of 0.2 amps. So I'm going to put that in a circuit here. Now the next current that we need to calculate is IL. The current flowing through the inductor. So that's going to be VS over XL. So it's 12 volts. The inductive reactance is 30.16. So 12 divided by 30.16. That's going to be, since I'm running out of space, I'm going to put it here, 0.3979 amps. So that's IL. Now there's one more current that we need to calculate, and that is the current flowing through the capacitor, which we'll call IC. So that's going to be VS over the capacitive reactance. And the capacitive reactance is this number here, which is 88.42 ohms. And so we're going to get 0.1357 amps. So now we have the current flowing through each element in the circuit, through the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. Now notice that IS is not the mathematical sum of IR, IL, and IC. If we were to add up those values, let's see what we would get, IR plus IL plus IC. So IR is 0 0.2, IL is 0.3979, and uh, IC is 0 0.1357. So adding up those values would give you 0 0.3. 7336, which doesn't equal IS. Now, even though IS is not the mathematical sum of these currents, it is the vector sum. IS squared is equal to IR squared plus IL minus IC squared. So we're going to use this formula to confirm it. This is a good way to check to make sure you have the right answer in this problem. So the current flowing through the resistor is 0.2. The current flowing through the inductor, we said that's uh, 0.3979. And the current flowing through I through the capacitor, which is IC, that's 0.1357. And I'm running out of space, so there's a parentheses there, and you need to square that result. So let's plug this in. So once you plug this in, you get 0.32977 amps. As you can see, this answer is in agreement with the current that we had before. So it does work out, which means these answers are correct. Now the last thing that we could do in this circuit is calculate the resonant frequency. At the resonant frequency, XL will equal XC. Here's the formula that you could use to calculate it. It's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the inductance, which is 80 times 10 to the minus 3, and then times the capacitance, which is 30 times 10 to the minus 6. And so that's going to be Let me do that one more time. Uh, 
I made a small error. So you should get 102.7 hertz. So at that frequency, the inductive reactance will equal the capacitive reactance. So that's the resonant frequency for this parallel RLC circuit. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the impedance and the current flowing through each branch, as well as the resonant frequency of the inductor and the capacitor in this circuit.